On Radio Falls Today programme, Michelle Hussain pressed Defence Secretary Grant Shapps for the UK's position on the forcible transfer of more than a million Palestinians out of northern Gaza. In recent times, there has never been an order of this kind. It amounts to moving, to, to wanting the population of half of the territory of Gaza not to be there anymore. Does the UK government support that order? So we've never been in these times in as much as we've never seen a country have 1,300 people slaughtered by terrorists. If you scale that up to brilliant Britain size, it would be thousands of Brits uh, slaughtered by uh, terrorists uh, coming into the country and doing that. And you'd expect Britain, and in this case, you'd expect Israel to have the right to defend itself. Now, if those terrorists then hide themselves from the populations, it is right to give that population uh, notice so that they can move. So and we certainly... support them then. You you think it is possible for a million people to be moved within 24 hours, and you support the UK government? You support the Israeli government in issuing this order? Well, I think it's absolutely right that the Israeli government are providing uh, warning to citizens. That's not, uh, I'm afraid, a luxury. No, about the, the order Israelis itself. Just tell us what the UK government thinks of this order. Does I, it? I just, so, I, I just, so we support it, right? You. Right. Okay. Just so, just just so everyone's absolutely clear, the UK government supports Israel in ordering a million people to move out of half of Gaza in 24 hours. The, the UK government supports Israel in providing advance notice uh, that Hamas are hiding within a civilian population, where, by the way, they're also holding a capture of those people who they kidnapped at the weekend. You're not and answering my question, so I'm, I'm still not sure whether the UK government supports this order of the Israeli military. I think you're literally the only person listening to this who would be confused by this. I've just said that the UK government supports Israel's right both to defend itself and in this uh, way, the, and that Israel is providing advance warning of military action in order for people to move themselves out of the way. Ash, before I go to you, this is something I've been thinking about a lot, which is that repeatedly we hear from British politicians. The IDF, the Israelis, are so effective in terms of their use of power, their use of violence, that there will be a clear minimization of deaths to innocent people. Are they really that on top of things when last Saturday happened an appalling act of barbarity, which they apparently had no forewarning about? They even ignored warnings from the Egyptians about what was about to happen 72 hours ahead of Saturday. But it's the same security apparatus which is going to so competently precision strike, just Hamas strikers. Nobody else is going to die. They didn't know any of this was happening a week ago, but now they're so adept that no innocent people will get killed. That strikes me as patent nonsense. Ash, what did you think of this exchange more, more generally? Well, just to respond to your original point about, you know, the technological brilliance of the IDF and, you know, their, their laudable moral restraint. If they've got the capacity to be so precise. Why is it that 19 members of the same Palestinian family were wiped out in an airstrike on a refugee camp in Gaza? Why have there been airstrikes on residential tower blocks and some Palestinians reporting that airstrikes took place before they received any warning from the IDF to evacuate. By the way, the warning to evacuate means that you've got 10 minutes, sometimes less. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being in your home with your family, being told you've got 10 minutes before your home will be destroyed? What would you take with you? How would you feel? What about people who have disabilities or are elderly who can't evacuate in time? There have been reports of people who, in evacuating, forgot to take clothes with them, tried to get back to get some of those basic necessities that you'd need to survive fleeing your home and were then subsequently killed in the airstrike. So if that sounds like precision targeting to you, it makes it worse because it means that there is a degree of callousness, um, a, a, a premeditation in the killing of civilians on the part of the IDF. Um, in terms of, of the exchange more broadly, I think that this is where you see the obscenity of what's going on within our politics at the moment, which is you've 
got this laundering of war crimes. The Israeli government have announced their intention to commit a war crime. Uh, forcible transfers it, are considered a crime against humanity. And what passes for an excuse is, well, they gave warning to do so. Now, I recall the Irish Republican Army giving warnings ahead of their bombings. That wasn't an excuse that the government accepted, which would therefore have meant that those bombings were lawful. It's not something which in any other context would be considered an appropriate excuse. And I'm glad that Michelle Hussein uh, pushed and said, well, what do you think of the order? And all anyone can fall back on is the same old tired platitudes of Israel's right to defend itself. Israel, like any other state, has a lawful right to self-defense, but that right does not include war crimes. No state, no organization has the right to commit war crimes, no matter how much they have been or claim to be provoked. And it is disgusting to me. It makes me feel deeply ashamed that our country's government is co-signing, I think, what will be looked back on as one of the great crimes against humanity, that not only did we turn a blind eye to the real human cost that some of the most powerful people in the world, some of the most influential people in talking about a rules-based international order, waved it on through? Yeah, I think this idea of um, proportionality as well, you know, it's equivalent to somebody um, losing a few members of their family. They're murdered, obviously an appalling thing. And then identifying the neighborhood of where the murderer comes from without knowing them. and killing the entire neighborhood. You have a right to seek justice through lawful means. Of course you do. You do not have a right to, you know, break the law in a way that is completely disproportionate to what's happened. Um, and again, what happened last weekend in Israel, I say it again and again and again, it was the most extraordinary event to happen, arguably in the history of, of Israel since 1948. It was the largest number of Jewish people to die on a single day since the Holocaust. But tens of thousands of people dying in the Gaza Strip over the next month it's not going to help that. And it's certainly not going to stop it happening again. Let's go back to that exchange with Grant Shapps and see where things go next. How does the UK government expect people who are elderly, sick, disabled or in hospital to move out of northern Gaza in 24 hours? Well, look, sadly, when mass went in the other way around, there, wasn't any, there weren't any of these options. They went to just murder people. Now, the, the option for Israel is either to just ignore this and allow it to happen again, or actually deal with Hamas. And, uh, you know, we think that Israel has the right to deal with Hamas. Now, uh, advance notice is being um, uh, given. Uh, it, it is quite right that Israel has given that advance notice. And we have made clear to Israel that it, of course, needs to act within international law and be proportionate. What is the, but there is no equivalence because Hamas don't provide the opportunities that Israel is providing. Hamas don't okay, tell the, their victims this is why before they cut the, their heads off that is, they should move. This is why it's really important to think about what is practical and possible in a place like, like Gaza. And no one who has ever been there or knows it thinks that it is possible because roads are destroyed, homes are destroyed, neighbourhoods are already flattened, people have little food, almost no fuel. And, and yet... You believe that they will all, 40,000 people an hour, will be able to move in the next 24 hours? Well, look, first of all, you're assume, assuming that everything instantly starts in 24 hours. Uh, well, that's not, the deadline uh, the Israeli certain. military has given. We're only going on well, what good. they're saying. It's, it, it's, it's good that they provided information in advance. And as I repeatedly said, Hamas certainly didn't do that before. They went and slaughtered people. Uh, but secondly, um, you know, it, 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 we don't know the, the detail of the Israeli plan. We do know, and President Biden uh, downwards has made it clear that Israel will need to comply to, with international law. And I would have thought a good start is to warn people in advance that the area that they're in is likely to be part of a attack uh, where they, uh, the Israelis are trying to get hold of the Hamas terrorists, who you don't seem to be particularly interested in, and... The BBC seems to refuse to call terrorists, even though the British Parliament has legislated terrorists, which is a question I haven't heard the BBC answer yet. Have you not seen any of the coverage on the BBC of the atrocities, the dead, the injured, the survivors? Yes, I have. 
So how can you say that we're not interested in in those atrocities? Well, I, read, I, I read, I think it was a very unfortunate um, uh, article, I think it was by John Simpson, explaining why, although the British Parliament has legislated a mass as a prescribed organisation and a terrorist, the BBC think it's not appropriate to call them terrorists. Are you aware of the Ofcom code and the rules for all broadcasters? Of course. Okay, so you'll know that the Ofcom Broadcasting Code requires that news in whatever form is reported with due accuracy and presented with due impartiality. Broadcasters are not the same as newspapers, and indeed all UK broadcasters stick to the same language around terrorism and these groups that the BBC is. We are not unique in this. So I, I think you are suggesting that whatever group is on the UK's list of prescribed groups at any time, that broadcasters should mirror that language? I think it's pretty clear. Uh, and I said, just been to NATO and seen the, uh, the evidence, seen the videos of uh, innocent people being beheaded, and their pensioners being flagged off and taken uh, as hostages. I think it's pretty clear that's terrorist activity. And I think it's pretty surprising not to hear it being called that. It's an interesting, it's an interesting debate. Michelle Hussain uh, is right to say that the BBC aren't alone in doing this. Ash, what did you make of this entire exchange? I, it really brought home for me two things. Firstly, the BBC on international affairs is pretty good. On domestic politics, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan, but on international affairs, it's very good. That's why it has a global audience of half a billion people. And secondly, compare the IQ and the, the perspicacity of uh, Michelle Hussein to Grant Shapps. It really is quite concerning about the caliber of our politicians, isn't it? I thought that it was very revealing when Michelle Hussein was asking, well, have you seen the images that have been coming out of Gaza? And Grant Shapps said, yes. And, you know, are you not interested in that? And then there was deflection, there was prevarication, and there was a return to these platitudes about Israel's right to defend itself. Um, because once more, just had some uh, breaking news. Médecins Sans Frontières have reported that the al Auda hospital in Gaza has been given just two hours by the IDF to evacuate. Um, as we've said, there is no way to safely evacuate Gaza City at the moment, less so for a hospital full of critically ill people. There are dwindling supplies, uh, there is no fuel in Gaza, and bombs are still raining down. This is in order to evacuate a hospital of critically ill, critically injured people. And I think that it's exactly that detail that hasn't been put enough to British politicians. And you've seen in that clip the way in which Grant Shapps squirms when he's having to be confronted by some of, of the realities of what's going on in Gaza, because you can no longer uphold this myth that what's being done by Israel is within international law, that it's proportionate, or that it falls within the right to self-defense. It is a web of lies which evaporates upon contact with any kind of reality. So I'm glad that those were the kinds of tough questions being put, put to Grant Shapps. I just wish uh, that there was more forthrightness on the part of the BBC to say things like the Norwegian Refugee Council labels what's going on as a forcible transfer, which is a crime against humanity. The BBC will say Hamas is described as a terrorist organisation by others, so it would not be a breach of impartiality to say that what's going on, the evacuation order, is being described as a forcible transfer, therefore a breach of international law and a crime against humanity.